Welcome to the replay, and we're going to be having ourselves a Thursday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, live stream, publishing Q&A, talking about Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing, Create Space, ACX, audiobooks, and whatever comes across our mind. Let's get it going. Welcome to Self Publishing with Dale, and if you want to learn how to publish your own books, then subscribe and turn your notifications on to get all of my latest videos. Wow, that was a cluster muck. I, uh, I, you know, I got all fired up. Woo! Getting, getting all revved up and such. And unfortunately, I just realized I'd left, you know, one of my plugs on here accidentally. Oh, whoops. We'll get to that. I dropped a little bit of a clue. We're going to be kind of doing this. So hopefully as everybody comes into the live chat, I want to let those of you know watching this on the replay, if you want to catch these live streams, and you want to get questions and answers to your questions, you'll want to pop in Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we have an alternate time as well on Saturdays at 9, or excuse me, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time where Mecca, Osai, and myself will be getting together. So the uh, chat's starting to fill up. I see my boy Dan from Creator Fundamentals popping in here. What's happening? Kim here and Bionic Vapor. Big shout out to both all of you, uh, all three of you. Hopefully uh, we start to see a little bit more picking up. I want to thank everybody for taking the time out of your day to, first of all, go over and check out my new Patreon site. That's patreon.com slash self-pub with Dale. If you want to help support the cause, you want to make a couple little tiny donations, you can get exclusive content not seen anywhere else. Some old footage about formatting your documents. Some of them show you how to make a book cover live ride-alongs. That's right. Some old live footage of where actually I show how I put together some of my book covers with the open source software called GIMP. You can only get that through Patreon, and it's real simple. All you got to do is go to patreon.com slash selfpublicdale, and you just donate $1 per month. Literally, $1. What's that break up to uh, on a day-to-day -day basis? A drop of Starbucks coffee. Exactly. $1. $1 here, folks. It's not much. You're going to get some more content. Stay tuned to patreon.com slash self-pub with Dale because I will be introducing new tiers within that that's going to get you exclusive content. So before we break into things, I want to kind of just lay the groundwork here. If you've got questions in regards to... Um, what's happening, everybody? Uh, I, if you got questions, I'm sorry, I kind of I got distracted by OBS. I'm like, hey, uh, I'm gonna try to pronounce this right. Yama, Yamaya. I probably said it wrong. Dang it. We were just uh, talking, not even about the hour before last, and I've already pronounced it wrong. I'm so sorry. Um, any event, uh, I definitely appreciate the the love and support. Remember, folks, that you can still donate within the super chat feature down here. But in the meantime, questions. I know you've got some questions. Let's get them answered. And as you can see, my illustrious wife, Kelly, has joined me again because you're gonna get a different side of self-publishing from her than what you would from me. And she's also the gal that works a little bit behind the scenes, and she's gonna be kind of manning the chat over here right now. So fire off those questions and we'll hopefully get some answers. So what's shaking on over here? All is well, Kelly Roberts, no worries. Thank you, I appreciate you being so forgiving. Um, rest assured, my brother Bionic Vapor probably would uh, butcher your name real easily. He's, he's even worse than me. Um, what are we gonna talk about? Well, hopefully we got we some- Are gonna have a topic? How's your Q4 going? How's my Q4 going? Hey, how about that? Let's go ahead and discuss quarter four. It's discussed a lot in the FBA circles, the Fulfilled by Amazon circles. Mm -hmm. But quarter four is great for anyone, anyone in any walk of sales industry. Quarter four can be huge because it's when the holidays occur between October, November, and December, especially here in the United States. Uh, so it's, it's going pretty good. It started out with a big bang. Um, merchandise shirts were shooting out off the uh, charts. But what I'm really focusing on is getting out a lot more of these publications into Create Space. And also, I mentioned to you that I had some books I was moving from KDP Select program. I got those opted off of KDP Select. 
and then I want to get him gravitated over to draft to digital. So wow. thank you very much. That is so, so nice of you. That is so nice. What what can we help you with? Or did he answer all the questions? Yamaya, it? that's it. Yes, I remembered it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. It's your chat. Go for did, it. Did you see my wife? She gave me the look. This is your your chat, not our, not our personal one. Yes. Um... At any rate, if you've got any kind of qu specific questions, please fire them off. If I change the cover of my book, would uploading that to Create Space in KDP then be considered a new edition of the book? Why don't you go ahead and handle this question? I know you've got this one on check. No, it would not be. It's just an update to your current edition. You only have a new edition if the interior has changed. Mm -hmm. And I assume you mean KDP, meaning the ebook version. Just make sure not to upload the paperback to both KDP and CreateSpace. Right, right. And that's a, that is actually a mistake that some people have done, is they upload the gigantic file for spine and back cover over onto KDP. And here's the thing is you've got limited real estate as it is make sure that you minimize it down to that front cover only for ebook covers so that way it's not looking like a mess uh but um one thing and this is the reason why she was very deliberate in how she said this is it's not a new edition yeah you could unpublish the other ones and then republish underneath another asin but fair warning they're they're starting to crack down on things like that they don't like people just unpublishing and then republishing the same exact content and why is that why? Because mm -hmm. you just shouldn't do it. Shouldn't do it. No. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, there's technical details, mm -hmm. but just, just no, don't do it. No. Specifically, what what was happening was people. You see, I was trying to get this for my wife here. People were gaming the system and unpublishing and republishing the same content. What they were trying to do was take advantage of the hot new release um, category as well as that first thirty days that a new book on Amazon would get. So. For, for you, Tony, though, um, I mean, gosh, you, you're out there promoting your, your book like crazy. So um, I wouldn't get too caught up on changing that cover just yet. Um, but um, if you do, just change out the cover, keep everything the same, keep the same ace and so on and so forth. And just to forewarn you, when you upload the new cover, you'll approve and everything, but it won't show on Amazon for probably, I've had some take as much as five business days for the new cover to show on Amazon. So just don't freak out. If it's not there within a day, it could take up to a week. And it will for expanded distribution through CreateSpace. It'll take upwards of four to six weeks. Uh -huh. So if your book is, for instance, available on walmart.com, yeah, that's right. You can have your book available through walmart.com. It will end up um, taking about four to six weeks. It'll take a while for it to happen. Now, I can't promise you your book's going to be put into Walmart, but I know that a good handful of mine are already there. Thank you, Willie Mae. Listen to that. Oh my gosh. William May. Let me tell you, this is guy, this guy is crushing it. Did I tell you how many words, William, please share with me your upcoming book. How many words did you have? This guy was shooting for 10,000. He was shooting for 10,000. Everybody mind the chat for a second. Watch the guy who just dropped the, uh, the green super chat. Thank you very much. I appreciate the uh, donations. If you had any kind of questions, please continue to keep them coming. This is C. You did a great job earlier answering her questions. Do you recommend buying books or making them on your own? Do you mean buying the e-cover or making it on your own? I don't understand that question. Do you? Um, where are we at? Do you recommend buying books or making them on your own? Yamaya, I it, this is going to come down to a time versus financial situation. So time versus money. Um, I prefer writing my own content because I like writing. I, I just love doing it. Occasionally, if I want to really expedite things and I have the discretionary expenses to do it, I will then hire out. But I don't ever put any kind of hired out or outsourced freelance writers on any of my own brands. So if you ever read anything that has the Dale L. Roberts name on it, that's me. Mistakes and all, uh, you know. Would you say that for covers too? For, for covers... Ah, oh, man, we've been doing more and more of our own covers because she's very experienced in Photoshop and I'm experienced in GIMP. Uh, 
Probably not in my future ones because I have a little bit more discretionary expense that I'm able to hire out. I'm researching one person and I'm waiting for him to get back to me before I make a, a choice on whether I was going to use him. But his covers are going to run about a hundred bucks for the ebook cover and it's about 200 bucks for the paperback and ebook cover altogether. The guy does great work so far from what I can see in his portfolio. Stay tuned. I most likely will post like a review of that on this channel, let you know how that goes. But I would just recommend that if you have the discretionary expense for hiring out for covers and you don't have the graphic design background, just hire a graphic design artist, get somebody to do it for you. But uh, we can use William May, for instance, here. He is um, top 10 uh, expired objections real estate book. That actually is a pretty good cover. And he got that done on Fiverr. Now, I know there's going to be some purists out there. They're going to go, oh, Fiverr, no, that's garbage. I beg to differ. Uh, William's doing really well with his book right now. And he got it over on Fiverr. So kudos to him. He made a smart decision and he got pretty good work. So I think the thing is, is getting the right graphic designer that knows your vision. So time versus money. If you don't have the money to afford somebody for a cover, then you're gonna have to either get the time to figure out how to do it yourself or the time to get the funds to get somebody to do it for you. I'd always recommend it whenever you get the chance, try to hire out. It really is, it just comes down to that. For instance, I had an issue with my email list yesterday and I spent two hours and she could hear me over here cursing in front of my, my uh, computer, just cursing at it because I couldn't figure out why I wasn't capturing any of the leads. And I finally just gave up and I, I handed it over to my virtual assistant, big shout out to Ava Fails, and Ava took care of it. Bam. You know, and I should have done that. I would have saved myself two hours of heartache if I would have just said, here, take care of this. So there's sometimes where you got to kind of know you're either going to have to pay here or you're going to have to pay here time or money and I'd rather pay money every single time if I got the discretionary expense. Me, I wanted to learn how to do covers. I think it's fun. So it, if you enjoy doing something, in mm -hmm. my opinion, don't hire out. So let me go back up to her. Mm -hmm. Should you make your ebook covers to look like the others in the same niche? Hmm. Why don't you go ahead and pick up on this one? Because you do a lot of covers, and I think that you actually had an even more recent horror story that you can probably share with people. Oh, yes. Um, does she mean to make like others in the same niche that she's produced? Right, right. Yeah, I think it helps because it's branding. You don't really see any books like on the New York Times bestseller or in the bookstore by the same author, the same niche, and they have two different covers. So mm. they don't have to look exactly alike, but I always think it looks really good if it looks very similar. Um, mm -hmm. And then he is talking to the horror story I had recently. On my niche, someone copied my cover, 99% of it, um, and description as well. So yeah. that's a whole different topic, though, than having it the same, you know, right. across the niche. So, you know, it's, it is important to kind of capture the same elements and maybe the same layout of sorts. Um, but when you're literally just plagiarizing, I know plagiarizing typically refers to the interior content and actual writing, but we're going to look at it in the scope of the graphic design, the actual look of that. You don't want to directly take from it. Uh, there was a very big author, his name's Michael Matthews, a fitness author, probably one of my favorites in uh, fitness. And um, Michael does very unique covers. You could tell that they're, they're his. And there was some other clown, I would say probably earlier this year, I discovered that he tried to do the same exact thing, same color, the same type of a layout. Uh, he might as well just call it the same name, but, and I, I will admit that I've tried to, to make my covers look exactly like other ones, but for some reason I could never press publish on it because I would rather have mine look uniquely me and look completely terrible, put a little bit of you know lipstick on the pig, rather than try to make it look at like somebody else's and just outright plagiarize them. So, oh, I see where you're going with that. Yeah, um, from people I talk to in the industry, there's been a lot of copying lately. So just make sure there's a difference between, you know, inspiration and copying. So just keep that in yeah. mind. Uh, I'll be doing it in a future um, live chat, I'm sure, that I'll sit down with, with everybody and show you my process on GIMP. 
and how I do that. And maybe on a future broadcast, uh, Kelly will sit down and show you what it looks like on Photoshop as well. Um, if you do um, go to the Patreon, here's a nice little plug, patreon.com slash uh, By doing the donations, actually, you will see probably, I think, three or four over the next month or so live ride-alongs that are about an hour to two hours long that I show the whole process of actually developing a cover using the same layout and structure as, say, the other books within your niche, but not plagiarizing what they have. So in other words, not using the same exact font, not, you know, using the same picture, not using the same words, things like that. It's just using the specific design. So I probably won't be doing the Photoshop right along. So. Okay. She, she just, she shot it down. Sorry. No. It's live here, guys. Um, let's see. Sassy. He had 23,000 words. William May. 23,000 words. Uh, so congrats to you, buddy. Looks like your your book's going to be firing off. How many of any of you watching right now, do you have any big projects in the work? If so, where are you at? Also, do I have any NaNoWriMo writers in here? National Novel Writing Month. Guess what? Guess how, how far I've accomplished? Zero. I've done zero. Yep, but that I put a description up. Yeah, it's not good. Hey, it's not a good some, start. some start. I, I foresee a lot of cussing this month. Probably. Um, and William Willie May spent twenty dollars on his fiber. So. So yeah, he wasn't doing it just five dollars. So that's that definitely shows it's it's it is a good cover. Um, you know, um, and I think it's real representative of the industry that he's within. So if you were to put it side by side with other real estate books, it makes sense. So just you know, side note, just because it's fiber is not going to always be five dollars. Yeah. All right, well, uh, let's keep this this chat going. Let's keep talking and such. Um, what are some things that have come across your table? Have you had any questions recently? I know somebody had reached out to you more recently uh, regarding a question. It was completely different, mm -hmm. um, which could open up a whole treasure trove. Um, I forget her name. I, that's that doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, she asked. She was going on ACX okay. Audible. I don't. Audible or ACX, okay. um, was looking for people to read her book and noticed that two different profiles with two different websites had the same exact voice. So she asked me if it was hired out or hmm, if she should go with it, something like that. Mm -hmm. My response was, I think it's pen names because mm -hmm. I've had ACX people have two different names before you know yeah. some people don't want other people to know that they read erotica or they read yep. you know if they're professors they don't want everyone else to find out their side hustle and let's face it um being a narrator is a brand in itself uh so let's just say for instance pam rossi was one of my interview guests uh about a couple months ago and pam specializes in a lot of uh non-fiction books and she says she really doesn't do fiction. I imagine if she were to ever expand into something like that, it wouldn't make sense and it would probably muddy up her brand and her name if she were to spread out into other things. So you have to think about it from a standpoint of, if I'm a narrator, if I'm representing a brand, how do I want to be perceived by the public? Um, you know, there's a good reason why I always say, try to get a niche and stick with it and build a brand around that rather than shotgunning off numerous things. And I see this this is just a common newbie self-publisher mistake. And heck, there's even some veteran self-publishers out there making this issue, um, doing this problem. It's trying to spread yourself out way, 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 way too far. Try to find something and stick with it. Now, I'm not telling you that you're married to your niche, but if you're doing, let's say for instance, a how to train your dog book and then your next one comes out is you know the best motivational quotations book and then your next book is um an erotica romance fiction and you have your name attached to that it really muddies it up so all that to say this is that these narrators that have separate names but are underneath the same profile it does it does happen you know they want to make sure that they distinguish themselves underneath one brand or the other um, I know exactly who you're talking about and I don't want to throw him under the bus because we haven't had really any kind of permission to kind of say so. But yeah, he, no, this gentleman that has worked with us 
work with her in her fiction uh, brand, but also work with me in a nonfiction brand. Cam's working on some big projects. I'm still excited about your fiction podcast. Motivational videos and speeches, awesome, and prepping for December. Uh, Willie May has awesome book covers coming up soon. Yeah, you had some really, really cool ones. I, I like to hear that. Um, obviously, you guys just keep on, you know, let us know what you're doing here in the comments. And if you happen to be watching this on the replay, I definitely like to hear from you. If for some reason YouTube snatches you down and puts you into purgatory, I'll rescue you. I'll bring you out. So if for some reason you got a link to a particular book on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, please no spammy links that's going to send me over to, you know, some questionable areas. Let's just kind of keep it clean and into regular online retailers if we Willie could. Willie Mays going to book two on Audible. Yeah, yeah. He Okay, so this is a very interesting thing. His book is already off to the editors, and he is right now going through the process of actually recording the audiobook in an effort to release all three versions of ebook, paperback, and audiobook at the same time. The man is smart. Uh, he's only on his second book, and this, geez, I mean, he's not even, what, two months into this business? Willie May, say goodbye to that bus driving before you know it. Yep. You know, it, it, that just goes to show if you've got a purpose and you really get yourself you know, get it ironed out and hammered out, you can really accomplish a lot. So if you haven't taken the time to watch William May's interview from about a month ago, uh, do yourself a favor. He really casts great vision for being a newbie self-publisher. He is immensely wise in what he does with his self-publishing brand. So kudos to you. I see big things happening over the next year for you. Um, I've had a very interesting thing. While you guys are still setting up some questions, let's go ahead, uh, fire out some questions. It doesn't matter how crazy it might be. I'm going to go ahead and share some of my weird experience as of late. Can you narrate your own Audible books? Yes. Yes, you can, actually. And uh, William, believe it or not, did his first book. I actually listened to the whole thing during two workouts already. And... Yes, you can, and ACX actually has a full FAQ section based on those that want to do their own books. So right off camera here, and I'm just going to try to carefully lean this into shot here. This right here is what's called a Rode NT1A, and it's something that ACX recommends for doing audiobooks. But that is a higher end microphone. It's very high quality. You wouldn't need something like that. And hopefully, uh, William, if you take a second, could you drop down the specific type of microphone that you had? It doesn't cost hundreds of dollars, okay? It's rather cheap. You can use such software as Audacity, which is open software. So you can get that for free, download it, you can work with it. And it's from every indication, from what I hear, it's it's not too laborious of a process. The reading part is, as long as you're a good reader, you could probably do that. It's the editing and the mastering, I guess, that's a little bit harder. Hopefully, William can kind of speak to that if he's still hanging about. You've got one that you're looking up right now? Yeah. Um, back when I thought I was going to record my own audiobooks, I was listening. I'm going to put it in the chat. I was going to this website. I'm not an affiliate or anything. Okay. And she um, has a course that teaches you how to use Audacity from start to finish. And I want to say it's like a hundred bucks. So um, if you're really interested, um, she has some free courses um, or some free lessons on it. I'd recommend signing up for that. And the only reason, to be honest, I didn't do it is because I have a Mac and I don't want to download Audacity because I have other software. That's yeah, the only reason. It becomes messy after a while. And then my other business started taking off and I'm like, I don't want to spread myself too thin again. So That's the most important thing. When you're, you're dealing with this business, don't don't spread yourself too wide uh, because otherwise, you know, the the man who chases two rabbits gets none. You know, that's, that's what I've heard. And uh, you want to be very, very careful. I noticed uh, Ron Kincaid, thank you very much. Uh, when is your course going to be available? Sadly, I was just having this conversation with y uh, Yamaya just earlier about the course. Uh, it's, it's called D DIY Publishing. And right now it's kind of on a standstill. I'm working, I'm partnered together with a gentleman named Rob Archangel of Archangel Inc. And we're just trying to iron out some of the stuff. And unfortunately it was supposed to come out October 1st, but here we are and it's still not even close to being complete. 
So with that being said, this is probably a good point that I can actually just take a break for just a moment and let you guys know, first and foremost, that as of this next month, or this month, actually, we're already in November. Hello. Um, this month, actually, I will be doing my own one month intensive coaching, group coaching program, all right? And it's very simple to remember. All you have to remember is publishwithdale.com. That's right. So this is going to be a one month intensive course. I will be having up to two group chats per week and one, that's right, one one-on-one -on -one session with each one of my students and I'm capping it at 10 students all together. Can I so, question? Yes. Is it published with Dale or publishing with Dale? It's published with Dale. It's published with Dale. Good Lord, thank you very much. You my wife. <laughs> yeah, it, everybody's probably gonna be cracking up laughing. They're gonna be like, oh, his, his, his wife just schooled him there. <laughs> So there we go. We're going to make it all party right there. All right. Well, that was an egg on my face. Uh, so that is published with Dale. That is published with Dale. So if you are interested in the coaching program, please, you're going to head over to publishwithdale.com. You're going to enter your email and your name, and it's literally all it's going to be used for. It's not going to be used for any affiliate marketing. It's not going to be used for anything more than getting in touch with you directly. And we'll get a video chat that we can talk and we can see if this is going to be a good fit for you. So that's publishwithdale.com. My wife is smiling and laughing at me because I had publishing. No, um, I'm laughing at bionic vapor. Oh yeah. Yeah. My brother's over there. Is that, is that a palm to the head or, or a punch? Fist, yeah. fist bump, fist bump. Yeah. Uh, so yes. She um, wants to know, have you tried garage band? I have not tried GarageBand. I heard someone talk about it in one of the recent audiobooks, and unfortunately his name eludes me, and he said it was real problematic for the actual mastering process. Whether there's truth to it or not, I, I don't know, but I have GarageBand, and I'd certainly love to test that out. So, um, but that's unfortunately just available for Mac. Uh, Ron, uh, don't sweat it at all, and it's not gonna be strictly a Kindle course, actually, that I'll be putting it out. It actually will be, all encompassing for ebook, paperback, and audiobooks. That's one of the nice things about having Rob Archangel as a partner is he actually has an extensive background in production of audiobooks. So you're gonna be getting a big overview of the business. And right now I'll tell you this, that there's gonna be 25 individual modules in the core components, and then there's gonna be 25 bonus advanced modules. Um, but right now I have to say that the group coaching program is going to be the first thing to do here. And the reason why I think it's very important that you uh, take a look at this and think of this as an option, the group coaching program, is we're going into quarter four. Between November 13th to December 13th, that's going to be the program, how long it's going to be launched till from until. All right. If I've only got one person, well, guess what? That one person's going to get great hands-on service. If I've got 10, the full 10, great. If there's anybody beyond that, I'm sorry. This is it. This might be my first and only foray into group coaching. This is gonna be kind of my way of testing things out to make sure that I can still do what I primarily love doing, which is publishing. And group coaching sounds great, and I wanna take everybody in a great and fantastic ride going into quarter four. However, this might be your one and only opportunity when it comes to actually doing the coaching because, once again, I, I like publishing, and I like to do this. So. If you want more information, once again, get on over there to publishwithdale.com. I see William May just drop down. My main goal is to have all three books done by the first of the year with Audible. After that, make them into a bundle along with Audible. Bundles are brilliant. Mm -hmm. They're a smart way to go. Can you uh, speak a little bit about bundles? What would you like to say to that? Well, explain them. A bundle is more than one book put together. And why would you make a bundle? Because people are lazy. Sorry to be offensive, but... If people can just buy one thing instead of three different things, you'll make more money and they'll be happier because they get more for bang for their buck. And if you discount it by a little bit, they'll be even happier. So um, when I see my sales for ACX and even Kindle and my other platforms I publish on, mm. I would say over half of my sales are bundles. But I don't look at it too closely. But I just... I see it and that just pops out at me. Yeah, those bundles are really nice. And for those of you that actually put out bundles or collections or box sets as they're called, 
on KDP, if you actually put it on KDP select, you might get some pretty insane page flips or KENPC as it's called. That's mm -hmm. Kindle Edition Normalized Page Count. Oh, did you know that? Yes. I knew that. They're also known as compilations, so it's all used inner interchangeably. Yeah, so don't don't get too confused. It's almost like when some people say landing page and squeeze page, kind of the same thing. Um, you know, you're you're dealing with that. Um, I just would recommend that if you ever do any kind of compilations or collections, just you got to treat it like your other books. You can't just throw it out there and expect for it to succeed. So you still got to put the same promotion and marketing behind a compilation that you would one of your single individual ones. Uh, I'm amazed and gosh, it's already been, it'll be two years this year that I actually had released an ultimate home workout plan bundle. And I put it out actually just on a whim. I, I think she can tell you I was in a really bad mood one day and I, I just, I threw together my best books into one, one compilation and I'll be darn, come January 1st and 2nd, I ran, um, I ran a, Two day free promotion. This is when it was in Kindle Select, the, the KDP Select program. I did uh, the two, and I'd say I probably, I can't remember, it was like 300 downloads. It wasn't anything that was groundbreaking by any means, but after the two day free promotion on January 3rd, it skyrocketed through the charts, and I was really, really super happy. And that one ended up hanging out there in the number one bestsellers list for quite some time. Um, so that's that's a nice little tip for those of you that are in the fitness industry, the health and wellness industry. You know, time your books just right because I'm telling you, there's it's a it's a fact. New Year's resolutions are right around the corner, and January, believe it or not, November's pretty good to me. December is better. January almost always turns out to be my best month because people are just going through my entire catalog of books. October was awesome for me. I can't even imagine what this month in December is going to be like. Yeah. I can't wait. Really, that is an awesome goal. I know it's like 10 minutes after you posted it, but I didn't have a chance to say kudos, so you're awesome. And I've never heard of Cool Edit Pro. Hmm. Okay, very good. There's a good recommendation there for you, Yamaya. Um, so Cool Edit Pro might be something else you can look into. And I know that uh, William, you know, bootstraps a lot of the stuff that he does. So, you know, he... He tries to get it going, and, and it's amazing the stuff he accomplishes and how he's able to put together his work. This guy's got some, you know, he's got, he's resilient, very resourceful, very resourceful cat. I, I can definitely appreciate that. Uh, pronoun. Can we can we talk about pronoun? Pronouns are awesome. Yeah, I, I like me some pronoun. Um, pronoun Publishing, for those of you that aren't familiar, is actually a Macmillan company, uh, Macmillan Publisher. Mm -hmm. And Macmillan, if you can remember back in the day, I think they used to do like the school publishing, uh, school textbooks, correct? Bigger, bigger name. Any event, uh, Pronoun Publishing actually reached out to them to do guest blog posts for The Verbs. We're going to kind of sit back and hopefully uh, something good comes of that. But either way, Pronoun is an aggregate publisher, as I've shared in some other um, videos and their main channels that they distribute to is Amazon Kindle and uh, KDP, that is. Uh, let's see here, Barnes & Noble, iBook, Kobo. Uh, I know Biblioteca is one of them and Google Play is the big one. Google Play, there's, unless you were grandfathered in on a deal with Google Play, you can't publish directly to Google Play anymore. That actually got sealed up about a couple years ago, wasn't it? Back when we started publishing, it was, right, it was right. a no-go. So yeah, uh, I think Ava, actually, my assistant, she actually still has access to Google Play, so she's able to. Maybe you guys can sweet talk Ava into to using her. Uh, but either way, you can go into Pronoun and you got Google Play, and I've just seen a ridiculous amount of downloads for some of my perma-free books as of late. And one of them being, uh, and feel free to look this one up, uh, is the uh, Chest and Arms Workout Plan. For some reason, it was getting... Yeah, maybe about 20 to 30 downloads per day. Nothing to write home about. And the whole purpose of the Permafree book is to, of course, make more brand awareness and get in email subscribers. So any event, for some reason, it just kept building up and building up and building up. And over the past couple of days, I've actually seen upwards of 200 plus downloads per day, which is exemplary, if I don't mind saying so. 
Um, so this just goes to show that there are so many other avenues that you can do outside of it. Now, obviously with it being perma-free, I'm making a big fat goose egg, but once again, you can't put a price tag on, first of all, free promotion and marketing. And the next thing is getting a larger email list and getting people to subscribe to your email list. So uh, I wanted to kind of share that avenue of Google Play that you can be able to put your books over there. How does Google Play treat you? Is that any I, good for I you? I think it does really well. I look at my reports there about once a month. Yeah. Because I just tip there for anyone watching or on the replay. If you have some books sitting, either A, not even published, shame on you. Um, B, they're on Kindle and they're not drawing a dime. Take them off KDP Select and put them over to Pronoun. Because I literally have 90 books on there and I make roughly one to two hundred dollars a month just having it sit there and do nothing so pronouns awesome yeah. yeah and i i think a lot of it has to do with google because there's such a difference between that and what i was doing on um kdp with those same titles yeah so if you're not drawing very much i know someone had uh, asked me recent in a, one of my recent video commentaries of they they were, they were concerned because they actually had their book enrolled in KDP Select, but had published it on draft to digital Now, I see the look on your face is, you know, you're probably going to give the same advice I did, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. I said, I immediately get it off draft to digital Yeah, because I've done that same thing before. And I, I for a couple of days, I kept looking every single day, and I'm like, oh, is my account banned yet? Oh, I'm like, damn it, I'm wasting... Dang it, I'm wasting too much time with this. And you so just I, killed monetization. I know, I did. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. I so. should go hide. <laughs> I wouldn't sweat it. Nickel and dime here. Well, uh, we're going to start to wrap things up here, folks. We only wanted to pop on for about a half hour. I just want to make a couple other little plugs, of course. Those of you that are interested in the group uh, coaching program, once again, it's November 13th to December the 13th. That is going to be limited to 10 students, all right? That's going to be 10 group coaching lessons as well as five one-on-one. -on -one. That's a weekly coaching session with me. I'll give you further details if you go to publishwithdale.com, enter your email and your legit name because I'll be reaching out to you directly. This is not an affiliate marketing thing. This is just a notification email thing. You've got my word on this one. Uh, in the meantime and in between time, remember that this coming Saturday, this Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we've changed one hour forward. Emeka Osai and myself will be on his channel Okay, that'll be 10 a.m. this Saturday. I will be on my channel as well, but you'll be seeing me on the mobile device. So you won't see him, but you'll hear him. And we'll be alternating weekends. If you want to join in on all the fun and the camaraderie, you'll want to join me for a coffee and a little bit of publishing chat with my boy, Emeka Osai. That's this Saturday at 10 a.m. What are you guys talking about? We haven't laid that out yet. I don't oh, okay. know. I think we're just generally shooting for a publishing Q&A. But uh, any event, any last minute words before we go on? Is that because January 1st, everyone wants to lose weight or that mean that all books have a bump in sales for the first year? Typically, it's because of the New Year's resolutions. And um, gift cards. Gift cards. Gift cards are big. I'm sorry. I, I, I did neglect that part right there. All right. Well, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you click the thumbs up. And of course, share it with somebody that you know that's into publishing too. Till later, this has been Self Publishing with Dale, and I'll see you soon.